Hi, in this slide I've listed a number of criteria for how to check on whether an extra service idea is a good idea or not. Um, and as we go through these criteria, I thought maybe what we might do is to sort of think in terms of uh, how would we score some of the great um, extra services that have been sort of discovered and 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 sold uh, in in distribution channels. Um, most of us would be aware be, be aware of what what are called voluntary store programs. So if I go into a True Value hardware store or a Do It Best hardware store, and I the place looks very professional. It's all organized and it's got good signs and so forth. That's a that's really sort of a franchise turnkey solution system that has come from uh, the hardware co-op and they said look you know we've got thousands of members so how would we run a best store and how do we come up with ways to help our members do that uh, it's kind of a hybrid between that and sort of McDonald's where the you, you don't have a choice as a as a as an independent owner of a McDonald's store they tell you exactly how everything has to be done um, but if I upgrade my store to that new system, that helps to attract more people in. The what's stocked and how it's stocked and how it's displayed, you know, helps to sell more stuff and so forth. Um, here I've put one 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 uh, concept called Value Link, which was something that was pioneered by uh, the Hospital Supply Distribution Company that originally was back in the 60s American Hospital Supply. It got bought by Baxter, so it became Baxter Hospital Supply. It got spun off by Baxter in, in 1996. For a while it was called Allegiance, and then very quickly it merged into another publicly traded um, pharmaceutical company called Cardinal, uh, which is now Cardinal Health. And a big part of Cardinal Health is the hospital supply division. So anyway, they, they came up with a, uh, a a system for taking care of hospitals, which uh, Jonathan Burns does a fantastic job of describing in great detail and economics and so forth in his book, Islands of Profit and a Sea of Red Ink. So at any rate, uh, when we think of, of these kinds of extra services, we have to realize that we can't go out and sort of say, hey, we have an extra service for you, but we don't have basic service brilliance. In other words, we don't have all the stuff you want to buy, and if we do, we can't get it to the right stuff at the right place, you know, the right way, errors and so forth. So uh, like like a, a wonderful wedding cake, the icing and stuff on top is nice, but they, you've got to have the cake. Uh, so ideally, it's something that can go on top of uh, basic service brilliance. So th this is always first. And until we've really got this done and tuned um, to a, a customer niche, we can't really worry about the extra services. The second thing is, is that when we go out and we look at for an extra service, for the cost of trying to figure out how to fill that need, we ideally would like to have an economy of solutions. So very right away we say, well, hey, is it possible that maybe 10 or more of our customers might want this? Then we get an economy of solution, uh, and the more we do it, the faster and better we do it, because there's a learning curve to what we're doing. So we're, we're looking for economies of solution here. So the next criteria is if we sell this, does it, it does it does is it synergistic with the goods we're selling? So in other words, we want to sell them stuff, but the fact we've come up with a new extra service. Does that actually, and it's maybe unbundled for fee, and we make money on the service, but does that in, in a sense support the goods? If you think about Caterpillar Tractor's uh, historic famous uh, parts guarantee uh, deal anywhere on the planet, you know, if something breaks down, there's going to be a qualified repair guy showing over the part in X number of hours, and a lot fewer hours than that, for example, in the continental United States. Well, you know, you're, you're going to pay a, a service fee and you have to pay for the parts and so forth, but it's so good that that's why you'd want to buy a Caterpillar tractor to begin with because they're so really, they're wonderful pieces of equipment that don't break down, but when they do, the service repair system is so good that the downtime of the equipment in total is, is fantastic. So one serves the other, it's synergistic. Next question is, is it, is, it a, is it a service that ideally can be sold on an unbundled you know, for a profit basis. And that's really a real test in the free market is, hey, uh, we could do this extra service for you. We'd like that. Oh, yeah, I'd love that. Oh, well, how much would you pay for it? Oh, I'd pay you $10 to do that. 
but if it costs you fifty dollars, let's be real, that's not a, that's not a, a viable product. But if they pay you fifty dollars, you can do it for ten. You can make forty on it. Then you can you've, you've got a real product, and that allows you to act really like a third-party logistics company and say, well, here's a menu of things that we can you know provide for you. For example, in the grocery channel, the the big grocery wholesalers that that emerged in the in the 70s as that whole industry consolidated. Uh, one was Super Value out of uh, uh, Minnesota at the time. They had at one point 185 extra services that they could sell to an independent grocery store on an unbundled basis for a fee. Now, what would happen is there would be departmental fights. The people who wanted to sell food into the grocery store and make the trucks run full were saying, look, to help us win this food contract, we've got to give them these extra services for free. And the service department say, no problem. You can give them away for free, but we're going to bill you, the logistics food division, for it because it's going to hurt our bottom line So if we give it away. So we have to charge you, which will hurt your bottom line. Well, you know, basically, people who want to sell food and get margin dollar and get paid in margin dollar, they don't really care about the cost to serve and the extra services. They really want to give those away for free to get more margin dollars. So that's a problem with how you do cost allocation and, and having incentives aligned in the right way. Um, so ideally, you'd be able to sell it for unbundled for profit and, and keep uh, everybody honest on the inside. Number six, um, when we do this, if it's really cool, that's great, but how quickly can people knock it off? For example, if, you, if we say to somebody, all right, if you buy uh, you know, X thousand dollars a month from me, you qualify for an extra 2% rebate at the end of the year. Well, that takes the competition about a second to understand, another second to, to copy. So it doesn't have any uh, any uh, competitive sustainable advantage. Uh, I remember when hotels first started offering free amenities in the in the hotel rooms like shampoo and, and, and conditioner and those little cute bottles. That was a big deal back in 1981, two, three, four. But very quickly it sort of exploded, and you know there are mints on the pillows and all sorts of gimmicks. But those all get knocked off pretty quickly and. Then become not extra, but just expected. Seven, is this going to lock in long-term relationship? And to a certain degree, this means that there's a switching cost. For the cost of, of identifying the opportunity, installing the solution, uh, making sure the solution really works, and tuning it so it's, it's optimum, uh, this is going to take work on, on both parties' part to get good return on the, on the system solution, if you will. Uh, so that when somebody else comes along and says, I have the same thing, uh, why don't you switch to me? go, well, yeah, but the switching cost is very high, so no, I don't want to do that. Uh, it would be great if it sort of opened up a new space and allowed uh, you know, a stream of, of ongoing uh, uh, opportunities and new sales. Um, and then lastly, can we kind of give it a name and productize it and brand it and even sort of sell it in a catalog? Like Super Value had a catalog of 185 services, and it, the, the, the services had had SKU numbers, and uh, and they were sold at, at you know at, at a, some price that allowed them to make a profit. And the service division was a, a separate P&L division within the company. So those would be some service criteria. So now let's look at some uh, some some extra services. Thank you.